The most dominant regular season dynasty began in 1991 and went through the mid-2000s. This dynasty was anchored by their dominant starting pitching of the likes that we will probably never see again. This is the rise and fall of the Atlanta Braves Big 3. If you enjoy MLB content, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Thanks. The Big 3 consisted of Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, and John Smoltz, all who were Hall of Famers. The three pitchers played together for 10 seasons with Atlanta, from the 1993 season to the 2002 season. But first, before we get into their time together, how did they form this great trio? Let's begin with the 1984 MLB Draft. Both Maddox and Glavin were selected in the second round, both straight out of high school. With Maddox going 31st overall, being picked by the Chicago Cubs, and Glavin being the 47th overall selection by the Atlanta Braves. This was the first move that acquired the first of the three big pitchers. Now, while Glavin and Maddox were beginning their careers down in their team's minor league system, Smoltz was finishing up his senior year of high school. He would wind up also being drafted right out of high school in the 1985 draft by the Detroit Tigers. But unlike the other two, Smoltz was selected all the way down in the 22nd round. He was the 574th pick. I think it wasn't too bad of a selection by the Tigers. Of the three, Maddox was the first to make his MLB debut in 1986 for the Cubs, where he had a 2-4 record. The following years, moves were made to where you started to see this trio forming. First, Glavin was caught up to the big leagues with the Braves, where he also went 2-4 in his rookie year. However, more importantly, there was a team in Detroit that was looking for a veteran starting pitcher that could help their club compete for a World Series. The Braves at that time was in their third season of a six-season stretch where they would finish below 500. They were looking for young talent that they could use in the future. The Braves traded a 36-year-old journeyman starting pitcher in Dole Alexander for a 20-year-old John Smoltz. Alexander did pitch well in the rest of the season going 9-0, but it still has to sting losing a future Hall of Famer. So now, Atlanta has two of their future trio in their system. The following year, Maddox starts to figure it out with the Cubs, going 18-8 on the season and being named to his first All-Star game. Smoltz would join Glavin on the big league roster as they both struggled with a combined record of 9-27. Over the next two seasons, the Braves would continue to struggle, winning 63-65 and 65 games. However, each one of the future trio would begin to get better. Smoltz earned his first All-Star selection, Maddox begun his dominance of winning gold gloves, and Glavin had double-digit wins both years. The 1991 season was the year Atlanta turned their entire franchise around, winning 94 games, the first of 14 straight division titles, and took on the Minnesota Twins in the World Series, before eventually losing in seven games. Also, Glavin won his first Cy Young that year. In the 92 season, the Braves continued their success, making the World Series in back-to-back -back years, but once again they lost. Glavin and Smoltz were good enough to both be All-Stars for the Braves, as well as the Cubs pitcher Greg Maddox. The offseason after the 92 season is when the Big Three would finally form. The Braves had already locked up Smoltz for four years before the 92 season begun. The Braves then re-signed Glavin for four years on December 17, 1992, only two days before making a massive move, signing the reigning Cy Young winner Greg Maddox on a five-year deal. Maddox has said the main reason he decided to sign with Atlanta was because he wanted to pitch in the World Series, which makes the turnaround in 91 so important. It was now official, the greatest trio of starting pitchers were finally together. For the next seven seasons, from 1993 to 1999, the baseball world was able to witness something that may never happen again. Three Hall of Famers all at their peak in the same starting rotation. What made them work even better was the fact that each one was great at different things. John Smoltz had four pitches he used, with his fastball being able to hit in the upper 90s, but his best pitch was his slider, which is regarded as one of the most dominant in the history of the game. Tom Glavin was a lefty that had decent control of his pitches with a great changeup. He was one of the best at preventing runners that got on base from scoring, and of course, Greg Maddox is the greatest pitcher ever when it comes to control. He basically only threw two pitches, a fastball and a changeup. Maddox's career average speed on his fastball was only 85 miles per hour, so there was a righty with a great slider, a lefty with a great changeup, and another righty who could place the pitch wherever he wanted to. During these seven years, the Big Three were able to put up some amazing stats. They combined for a record of 340 wins and 166 losses. They had 3,598 strikeouts and a combined 2.92 ERA. If you break those numbers down, you get an average per player for each season with these stats. 16.2 wins and 8 losses with 171 strikeouts. That is just ridiculous to think about. They certainly didn't like the awards during this span either. They combined for 11 All-Star games, won 4 Silver Sluggers, and won the Gold Glove every year thanks to Maddox. 
The most impressive thing they accomplished, however, was winning the Cy Young Award five of the seven years. Not only did they win it five times, they each won the award at least once. So they literally had three candidates that could be the best pitcher in baseball at that time. That is just wild to think about. While each pitcher was having success, how was the team doing? As already stated, they won the division every year, so they obviously were a good team. Of the six years in the playoffs, there was no playoffs in the 94 season due to the strike. The Braves made the World Series three times. Unfortunately, they were only able to get the job done once in the 1995 season. There it is! Swung! Fly ball deep left center! Grissom on the run! Yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah, yes! Yeah. The Atlanta Braves yeah. have given you a championship! beating the Cleveland Indians in six games, with of course one of the big three, Tom Glavin, winning the World Series MVP. With all the talent the Braves had in the 90s, it is a letdown that this was the only World Series win. After the 1999 World Series where Atlanta was swept by the Yankees, the end of the big three was beginning. Now they all stayed with the Braves for three more seasons, but they didn't stay in the rotation together. During the 98 and 99 season, John Smoltz was dealing with a chip bone in his elbow and ligament strains. It became even worse in spring training of 2000, where he tore a ligament in his elbow, requiring him to have Tommy John surgery, meaning he had to miss the entire season. The following year, when he was able to pitch again, the Braves decided it was best for him to pitch out of the bullpen. He didn't transition back to a starting pitcher until 2005, and by then, both Glavin and Maddox were gone. Glavin became a free agent in 2002 and signed with the New York Mets. Glavin said if Atlanta had offered him anything close to what New York did, then he would still have been a Brave. I guess Atlanta had decided that the big three was officially done. The following season, Maddox was also a free agent and decided to go back where he came from, signing a deal with the Chicago Cubs. While the three pitchers may not have accomplished all the team success that they were capable of given all the talent, you just can't deny just how rare it was to have these three pitchers of their level over such a long stretch of time pitching in the same rotation. Nowadays, I just can't see anything like this ever happening again.